Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. What do you think happens to us after we die? <clears throat> That's an interesting question, actually. Um, mm. What I think happens, personally, um, hmm, it's kind of hard to say because, like, there's there's a lot of like different um, approaches to it, to the afterlife theory. Mm. Either either our soul gets transported to the, like an afterlife that the soul lives, if you get what I mean. I can't really describe it in English because I'm not natively speaking English, so it's kind of hard for me. But um, either the soul gets uh, transported somewhere where it lives on for a while, or um, we just wait until we get reborn, which, okay. uh, in in the sense of um, like, because in the universe, uh, everything with a, a potential of happening will happen eventually given enough time um right. or the exact um what's it called structure of our atoms might reform sometime in the future and we'll right, right. once again build exactly like an exact replica of our right. body because would you say there's a god also difficult as to answer but <laughs> It's funny, you um, don't know, you said you don't know, um, English isn't your first language, but you know the English swear words. Oh. Yeah, of course, I mean, <laughs> the first thing you learn in languages is the swear words. Okay. Um, Try not swear, if that's, I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. um, okay. um, th think, think about this, right? Your house, would you agree that someone had to build your house? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. We've never seen the builder, but we know someone had to right mm -hmm. yeah. same thing with this universe we've never seen anyone build the universe but because the universe yeah. had a beginning it's got to have a creator for it does that make sense mm -hmm. that makes that definitely makes sense but um the theory i have for that is um that do you know like uh, the big bang may just be like you know how your brain works it's just a synapse with electrical um signals getting sent through it right and that's like the start of something and if there's a god i think that god had a thought and that thought was so detailed because he's god and he can like think things through in like perfect um depth i guess is the best word to describe it okay and that li like just the self-consciousness emerged out of the deep out of the detail that God put into that thought. So we basically just uh, stem from a, yeah, from, from a mind, from a, it's like Urverstand, Urverstand in German. Oh, uh, okay. You, you German yourself? Yes. Okay. Oh, cool. So I guess you'd, you'd agree that like, just like with your house, there's a lot of design of that house. And so, it shows intelligence and you know the, the person who made it must be smart enough to kind of put it together it doesn't fall down and so when we look at even things like atoms and dna which shows that this universe is so complex showing how intelligent god must be right mm -hmm. and it would also show then that he cares about human beings because he's even given us a conscience we know right from wrong okay and so would you say you're a good person no all right. No, I wouldn't. For example, though, have you ever lied before? Yep. Yeah, I've lied as well. Have you ever stolen something? Uh, no. No, not even from, like, your brother or sister. You took something without asking them? No, I'm an only child. Okay. So or even this, okay, um, even this one. Have you ever um, looked at a woman with sexual desire before? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or even, have you ever been drunk? Yes. Right. So if God was to judge you based on those things, would you be innocent or guilty? I mean, he put those things in our reach for a, for a reason, right? Just like so, a kitchen knife might be in your reach as well, but you don't go and abuse the knife by killing someone with, with that knife. Abuse. That's like the thing. If you don't exactly. abuse it and if you... So with you know, sex, 
God, God created sex as a beautiful and enjoyable thing, but he says the right place for it is only marriage. And so it's an abuse of sex to have it outside of marriage. Right? Same thing with alcohol. You can drink it, but if you get drunk, that's abusing alcohol. Okay. Right? And so if we've done these things wrong, we're guilty, aren't we? Right? We've broken God's law. So therefore, should he reward or punish us? In that sense, he should punish us. Yeah. And so is that heaven or is that hell? That's hell. Yeah, which is definitely not where we want to go to. So what can we do then so that we don't get sent to hell? Either we abstain from sin or we, uh, well, I don't know how to put it, but we don't abuse the things that we're not supposed to be and just I guess the consume them in, in, in a healthy The problem manner. would be, though, we've already done the things wrong. So even if we stop doing it from this day forth, you've still got the history of it. That's exactly. So what we need is somebody who'd be willing to take all of your hell punishment on your behalf. Jesus. That's exactly. Jesus who died at the cross for all of our sins. For Spot all of our on. Sins of humankind. Yeah. So if he takes your hell punishment for you, then where would you go when you die? Heaven, probably. Yeah, not just probably. If he takes all of your punishment, there's none left for you to get in hell. So therefore, the only location you could end up is heaven. So based on what you've just heard, what is the reason that you can go to heaven? That Jesus took all of the sin for me. Good answer. Good answer. And so therefore, the only thing you've got to do to get to heaven is simply to trust that Jesus has already taken your punishment for you. Do you get that? I, I see that, yeah. So That's then let's nice say, way to put it. yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's amazing that he'd be willing to do that for us. Hey, yeah, definitely. so let's say today you did trust that Jesus took your punishment for you, but then you sinned again tomorrow and died two minutes later. Would you go to heaven or hell? Heaven. And why? Because Jesus took all of the punishment. Yeah. You're exactly right, because he paid for not just your past sins, but even all of your future sins as well. Yeah. So my big question for you would be this. When will you trust that Jesus has taken the punishment for all of your sins? When will I trust that Jesus took my sins? When, when the proof is brought forth that the Bible is not just a accumulation of um, past people trying to... Um, build up a structure of society and is actually the word of God. Well, that's like, the thing. That though, is that proven, I would definitely believe it. Well, the, there's actually, it's that. interesting that you said you think it's um, like the Bible is there to kind of just like build up society of some sort. Um, it's to guide the first but, uh, steps of society, basically. But, but notice, there's not actually any evidence to say that that's why the Bible was written to just build up society or to control people or anything like that. So you notice you're believing something without Not evidence control. then, right? Um, didn't need control, yeah, yeah. Right, and so yeah. I, I don't actually... The point you're trying to make, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think because it's that you like lack evidence. the same thing for both sides, yeah. Because no, but the thing is, that I would say there's a lot of evidence to show the Bible's true. By the very fact there's no er no errors, no contradictions in it. But more specifically... Jesus proved himself to be true by actually coming back to life three days after he died. Something which we can still verify today just purely based on the historical documents from that time. Right, we've even got like official Roman historians that record about Jesus and his crucifixion and so on. And so I would say this, the reason, the thing that stops a lot of people from trusting Jesus paid for their sin is not a lack of evidence, but it's a love of sin. It's a love of living life their own way. Right, because if I present it to a smoker showing that that smoking causes lung cancer, if that man wants to keep on smoking, he'll keep on smoking anyway. And so that's the same thing. It, it's not a lack of evidence that that you're you're lacking, because you can look into it. I encourage you to look into the evidence about this. But if you want to keep on having sex before marriage, looking at pornography, getting drunk, doing what you want, then you're going to say, "Well, I don't really want to believe in Jesus because I want to keep on doing things that I want to do." But I mean, it's not contradictory to doing those kinds of things because Jesus died for exactly that reason so that you could do that. Do you think it's so that we can keep on doing that? 
or is it is it to actually no, get rid so of we don't so we don't have to to think about it so we can just live the life that we are supposed to be living because it's planned by god so somewhere. the way that we're supposed to be living then right so not the way that's evil or the way that disobeys god's commands but the way how he wants us to yeah. i'll give you an example why let's say you're in a burning building but a fireman risks his life to bring you out to safety what would you want to do for that fireman who saved you i want to thank him and i want yeah. him to you know that i'm really grateful for what he did to me yeah and you definitely don't want to punch him in the face after he saved you right most likely not. If you didn't touch me in an inappropriate spot, I don't think I would want to. Yeah. So, same thing with God. If God has actually laid his life down to save you from hell, what would you want to do for Jesus? Thank him. Yeah. And therefore, how would you show that thankfulness? Prayer? Maybe. What about living how he wants you to live because if you know that your sins is are what cost jesus his life on that cross would you want to keep on doing the very things that killed jesus he died for i get it yeah i get it that's fine yeah. and that's why when you do trust that jesus paid for your sin it'll necessarily lead you to wanting to live better that's going to be the natural result not that you'll be perfect but you'll have a completely new attitude towards sin you'll love to do what's right and you'll hate to do what's evil and and just as you go on god you'll just be finding yourself getting better and better resisting sin and and living more how god wants you to so let's imagine you're standing before god today god asks you why should i let you into heaven what would you say to him Good. I have lived the life your son has wanted me to live. Okay. In that answer, were you trusting in Jesus dying for you to get to heaven, or were you trusting in yourself? Both. Well, not really. Think about it. You said, I've lived the way your son wants me to live. What you were trusting in was your own, was your own actions then, wasn't it? Now, if you... Yeah, yeah, right. It was my, it was my perception of, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and if you said that to God, God's going to say, "All right, let's take a look at your life." He's going to find about about every single sin that you've done, and God's going to say, "My standard was perfection. You haven't lived the way that I wanted you to, and He'd have to send you to hell." So think about what you've learned in this conversation so far. What's the thing that actually gets us to heaven? I tried to be the best me I could be. So it's still yourself again. I'll show you something. Have a yeah, look at this. Uh, Let's say this is you here. This is your uh -huh. punishment. It's coming straight towards you. What's Jesus doing? He's holding it off. Yeah, he's actually taking it on your behalf. So therefore, where do you go when you die? Um, so based on the picture, what's the only reason you go to heaven? Jesus. So if God asked you, why should I let you into heaven? What do you say to him? Jesus. What? Jesus what? Because Jesus, you know. <laughs> yeah. What did he do for you? He took it. He took yeah. all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And notice in that answer now, that's not trusting in yourself at all. You're simply trusting in what Jesus has done for you. Mm-hmm. And that's why God could say, welcome to heaven. Your sins have already been paid for in full. Isn't that amazing? That's great. And so if you trust that's this true. today, that Jesus paid for your sin, on a scale between 0% to 100%, how sure can you be that you're going to heaven? 100%. Yeah. And so do you think you're going to start trusting that Jesus paid for your sin? Yeah, that's kind of the thing because i'm always like i've always been a critical person especially in like the, the theological thing yeah but, and that's why i guess i would encourage you to do your research then to, to actually look yeah. at the historical accounts about the life of jesus yeah i definitely will 
<laughs> it's it's an incredibly interesting topic and it's amazing to see like I've never talked to a person quite as eloquent and as smart as you are especially in that regard because you like provided good examples on which to to base those things that's that's amazing it's well, really good and I love yeah, what well, you're doing like I, I do this because I care about you man you know because I don't want you to that's, go to hell that's also a beautiful thing that's also a beautiful thing about Christians in general like um, faithful people they, yeah, they have something they want to give to other people and that's rare today especially yeah that's so true and because there's nothing wrong with seeking pleasure or seeking happiness right so the reason why we might choose to sin is because we want the pleasure that we get from doing that sin but the thing is is god's not against fun he's not against enjoyment or pleasure he's just against enjoyment or pleasure in the wrong way Right, so that's why he made food enjoyable. You can eat food. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you eat too much food, that's abusing food. He made sex. That's enjoyable. When you have sex before marriage, that's abusing it. And by by choosing to just sin now and then and reject Jesus' sacrifice is actually to choose the path of least pleasure. Now, you might get a buzz by being able to do a bunch of sins now, but you actually then, the moment you die miss out on the infinite amount of pleasure that there is in store for you in heaven and not only do you miss out on that you actually get the opposite eternal suffering when the path of actually saying look i'm going to not try to do those sins now and i'm going to actually just trust that jesus paid for my sin is choosing the path of most pleasure because even though you might miss out on some temporary sins now the pleasures of heaven are so much better and you avoid the eternal pain that's to come right yeah. And so, yeah, that's why I'm sharing this with you, man. I, I want you to be saved. You now know the way. Even though you had maybe some sort of religious upbringing or background of some sort. Is that right? Kind of not that deep, but... Yeah. On the, but I don't like, think you had... Idea. Right, and I don't think you had actually ever understood this message um, before this conversation. Not really. You you were the first to put it in exactly that way, you know, because the thing I've always thought is that the Bible is just a compilation of like stories people used to tell in order to, to form a society and to form like a um, a certain structure in which people could, could uh, develop a society with like the ground rules being set, the Ten Commandments, and uh, just yeah right. people telling people what to do and what not to do basically so that a you know um coexistence could be possible right but the thing is that you've already got the government that can do that the government already you know tells you what you can and can't do and you get punishment i know but that's like the first because, <laughs> but it makes sense that just like in your house, who sets the rules? My parents. <laughs> yeah, so it's your parents' house. They set the rules. So if if you tell your parents, "Hey, look, I don't want to obey your rules anymore," they're going to say, "Well, you, while you're under our roof, you got to you got to keep them. Otherwise, you're out of here." And so, in the yeah. same way, the creator of this universe has the right to set the rules for what he wants us to do in his universe. And so. If we break his rules, there has to be a place of punishment. Just like if you break society's rules, there's the jails you can go to. You break God's rules, he's got an eternal jail, hell. Mm. Now, you know there's a God now. You know you've done wrong, and you know that you therefore deserve that place of punishment, just like I do. But in this conversation, you've learned the way to get to heaven if you yeah. trust that Jesus paid for your sin. And so it makes sense, I think, for you to to trust that Jesus done that for you. Faith is strong as hell. Faith is really a strong, like, I don't know, I don't know. I wish I was more eloquent in English so I could express my feelings right now because that's just, I, I think your message is great. It's, it's really amazing because faith can, can do so much for people. It can really help them get on the right path. And I think most don't 
even get the opportunity to even think about stuff like this. Yeah. And that's and, great. And it's amazing and that's that you I, take the time to 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 do that for other people, for complete strangers even. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If I saw a blind man walking towards a cliff, I'd have to go up to that blind man and tell him, look, there's a cliff ahead, turn around, don't fall off. And if I know you're heading towards hell, the most loving thing for me to do is to talk to you about it and, and tell you how you go to heaven instead. But I think it's important to realize that this is not a blind faith. This is a rational faith. It's a reasonable one. So just like, yeah, we believe there's a builder for your house. It's a faith, but not a blind one. It's a reasonable one because it can't build itself. Right? Mm -hmm. And so same thing. Like we, like we believe that Alexander the Great was real, but that's not a blind faith because it's based on heaps of historical evidence showing that. Same thing. Believing that Jesus is who he says he is, that he died and came back to life, is a faith, but not a blind one. It's one based purely on facts and evidence. That's why I believe it. So I don't believe this in hope that it's true. I believe it because I know it's true. The evidence is there to show it. And so, do you have a Bible at home? I do, yeah. Cool. Well, I'd encourage you to open up to the book of John in the Bible. Okay. So that's in the second half. It's in the New Testament. Start from the book of John because it basically just, it's its one of the one of the accounts we have about Jesus, what he said, what he did. And it's a good one to start with because it just gives you a good overview. And so I would encourage you even this day to start reading it. It only takes 90 minutes to read the entire thing. So you can read it in one sitting or over multiple days or weeks. And I think you'll learn a ton from it. But at least also realize that what's going to be holding you back in some ways is your love of sin. And so let's imagine, let's say someone today offered you $1 billion. They said, if you accept the $1 billion, you know you definitely will have to go to hell forever when you die. Would you accept that $1 billion? One, like the 50 to 60 years of enjoyment I get out of that for, in like the mortal realm would not weigh the, would not outweigh the eternal suffering that was waiting for me. So I thought, no, <laughs> yeah. I would not. Exactly. You make it such a good point. And yet the point is this. No one's even offering you a billion dollars to go to hell. All you're being offered is the temporary pleasures of sin, which don't even satisfy you that much. That's why you got to keep doing them again and again and worse. And so if you wouldn't accept one billion dollars to go to hell, definitely don't accept a far worse of a deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. That's good. That's a good yeah. point. Do you, do you have any do you have any questions or comments yourself? I'm just kind of processing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's I'm just kind of I'm just kind of why don't they teach that shit in school? Um oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why don't they teach that in school? <laughs> yeah. It will be it will be a great help to a lot of people I know especially. Because like everyone's suffering with the same kind of problems, mm. everyone's enveloped in sin somewhat, mm. and they don't really know what to do. Because some people are, are faithful, and they believe in God, and they want to believe, but they believe they're bad people because they sin. And they try to to they they make themselves feel worse for doing it, and that's something I don't like to see. And that's why I've always like kind of looked at. Christianity and faith in general as a bit of a self inhibitor in some kind of way but you kind of you kind of showed me that there's like definitely a different side to that yeah and I'm really glad you did because that opened my eyes to a lot of new aspects I can think about now and yeah, I yeah. definitely needed something to think about so That's thank so you yeah, no worries. That's so good. And and so in order for someone to trust that Jesus paid for their sin, they obviously have to realize that they've sinned. They have to realize that they've broken God's law and they deserve his punishment, right? Because God's standard is perfection. But what so many people think is, oh, I've sinned. I'll just try to be better. Hopefully that'll fix it. Oh, maybe I'll just do some more good deeds. And so, yeah. and, and it just doesn't work. Doing good doesn't get rid of the bad we've already done. 
But that's why this is what's different about Christianity compared to every single religion in the world, is that all the other religions think that if you just maybe just do more good things than bad things, then maybe that gets you to heaven. That's honestly like, like doing five good things and one crime on the same day. The police are still going to punish you for the crime despite the five good things you've done. And so Christianity is so different where we don't do good to get to heaven. We have someone willing to take our punishment for us, to pay our fine, so therefore we can enter heaven. And that should make you realize this is the only one that actually is going to make sense in terms of getting me to heaven. And so that's why that, that should make you think, well, yeah, this makes Christianity stand out as being true. And, and unlike Buddha, Muhammad, and Krishna, who just lived, died, and stayed dead, Jesus verified himself by coming back to life three days after. Yeah. I, I will pass on a website to you to check out. Okay. Um, it's uh, this one here, needgod.net. Basically, it just gives you a good summary of what we've just talked about. Um, got a bit more information. And if you think of any more questions you want to ask, you can actually ask on that. Uh, website okay. yeah because man I'm, I'm hoping that i'll get to see you in heaven oh that would be great i would i would be looking forward to actually communicating with you on a standard i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah darn it darn it <laughs> and so just I'm to sorry. double check just to double check then with you um does doing good things have any part in you going to heaven Not really, no. No. Not really or not at all? Not at all, actually, because, like... Yeah, you're he right. Doesn't care. Well, because it's a free gift. Yeah. Right? He's not saying to us, I'll die for you if you be good and follow my rules. Because that wouldn't be a gift. He says, I'll die for you as a gift to you. You just have to accept the right. gift, and that's by believing he died for you. But obviously, if you believe it, you love Jesus, and that's what's going to mo motivate you to start living how he wants you to, out of thankfulness. Yeah. Thankfulness is one hell of a, of a way to, to negate negative feelings. Thankfulness really well, I would, I would actually, to... I would say that a, a Christian, a Christian's life is far more joyful than even the non-Christian's life. Because think about it, for myself, I've got no fear in death. I know 100% certain I'm going to heaven, not because I'm good enough, but just because Jesus died for me. And so then, when hard things happen in life, tragedies or whatever, instead of that making me depressed and sad, I can just be so joyful because I know I'm not just living for the temporary things of now, I'm living for that eternal kingdom that is to come. Right? But compared to someone who's not trusting Jesus died for their sin, all they're living for is money, possessions, experiences, things that they can't take with them and ultimately therefore doesn't really have any significance and so that's why you'll find so many more of them depressed and miserable and they just try and don't think about death too much because it scares them and so they just try and distract their mind by just doing a whole bunch of just different things in life to, and not thinking about the deep questions of why we're here and what's to come afterwards it makes a lot of sense yeah it makes because man do you know when you're going to die could be any time if you happen to die today without trusting that jesus paid for your sin then where would god have to send you help and so when should you start trusting that jesus paid for your sin now yeah you know you should and so carefully and consider. I, I, I definitely will. That's the thing. I, I even even if it's not as you say it is, it doesn't hurt being thankful for someone who may have done something positive for you. And that's but probably it, it's the more than may though. For me. Sure. I know. Okay. And yeah. I'll probably get to that point sooner or later, but right. I'm not ready at the moment to do that. I'll read the book of John. Good. And then maybe I will be at that point. But I'm already thankful for this conversation, at least. Good. Because Good. for real, I, I think you're, you're a beautiful spirit. I, Man, love, I, I love your wording. 
Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate yeah your your willingness to hear and listen and um yeah you 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 picked it up really quickly, which is awesome. And I'd love to hear from you. Like once you've even read through the book of John, I'd love to hear from you on that needgod.net website. Just click on ask a question. The email goes to me, and that's I just love to hear like um kind of what you've discovered, what you thought about it, um where you're at, and you, you can say yeah, like just it'd be good to it'd be good just to get an update from you. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I will. Definitely. That's cool. That's cool. Well, my name is Ryan. Uh, I'm from Australia. What was your name? Um, mine's Max. I'm from Germany. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you so much, Max. I really do appreciate this conversation. Thank you for talking to me. It was a pleasure. For real. Yeah, no it worries. Was, so make sure you really cop- nice. copy that website down so that you don't lose it when it's chatting. I already have, yeah. Okay. I have a separate text document this one. <laughs> cool. That's good. All right. Well, ha- have a good rest of the day, man. You too, my friend. Okay, goodbye.